brass base, and green shade. You've seen this lamp before. Was it in a show? Game? Movie? Who knows? But you remember this lamp. Why do you remember it? Where did it come from? Why does it keep popping up? My name is Skip, and I'm here to shed some light on the banker's lamp. Long story short, it's Harrison D. McFadden's fault. I can only speculate what was going through his mind when he filed the first patent for the banker's lamp on May 11, 1909. Finally, the world can see the vision strapped in my mind. I must be rid of these tormenting ideas. All I can see is green. It must have truly been a burden on him because production, distribution, and sale of this lamp all happened that same year. It was originally produced, I think, in the patent by the by McFat by McFadden's own company, but was actually produced in uh, under the company name Emerlite. And that is the most kind of well-known uh, producer of the lamp. Sourcing brass for the bases of the lamp was pretty easy in the United States. The green glass, however, that was a different story. Perhaps McFadden had difficulty instilling his feverish lamp vision. Luckily, exactly one factory was willing to produce this infatuating shade with the signature green. This was the J. Schreiber and Neffen factory, located in the very small city of Raputin, Moravia, which is in present-day Czech Republic. Though even they might have been skeptical of McFadden's pipe dream, a very sticky contract was created. It stated that s and couldn't sell these signature green shades to anyone else, but McFadden must purchase a set minimum amount of the green shades per year. s and needed to be profitable selling these shades. If McFadden couldn't sell these lamps, he would be in huge financial trouble. Though, suffice it to say, McFadden had no idea what was going to happen in the coming years. Envision yourself for a moment in the throes of business, surrounded by ledgers and legal tomes. Fear not, for the Emeralite Banker's Lamp is here to banish the shadows from your financial endeavors. Picture this, your office, bathed in the radiant green glow of the Emeralite, as you navigate the complexities of commerce with precision. This lamp is not just a fixture. It's a symbol of your triumph over the chaos of paperwork. The, the original lamp was composed of a brass stand, uh, a green glass lampshade, and a full chain, full chain switch. And it was actually the lampshade that was one of the kind of catalysts as to its popularity. The banker's lamp exploded into popularity after the First World War. Marketed with the notion that it would decrease stress and increase productivity, these lamps became quite popular in high-stress financial environments like banks and stock brokerages. They even began to bleed in lawyers' offices, uh, university professors' offices, oh, and also libraries. But did the green light actually decrease stress and increase productivity? There are a couple of more recent studies that suggest there could be a link to green light and stress relief, but there's not enough evidence to claim this as medical fact. Dubious marketing aside, this lamp was a hit. McFadden was set for life. The s and factory was profiting heavily. Though, sadly, this did not last forever. But first, a message from our sponsor. It's me. I'm the sponsor. I've been so fascinated by the history of the banker's lamp, I've been excited to delve into it and present my findings here for you. I want to continue to delve into art and digital media and other creations to discover what they can tell us about human behaviors and how we can continue to create awesome things. Please hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed my overview of the banker's lamp so far and you want to explore creativity together in my upcoming videos. Okay, that's it. Back to the banker's lamp. The emeralite was at the top of its game. 
At this point, the only thing that could take it down would be a world war. Less than half a year after it was signed, Nazi Germany broke the Munich Pact. Germany invaded the Czech provinces of Bohemia and Moravia on March 15, 1939. These provinces were now under Nazi control. Because of this, the SNN factory was unable to export its signature green lampshades to McFadden's factory in the United States. Legally, they had nowhere else to get the glass from. So they had to, uh, and of course there's also financial struggles in times of war, right? And so they had to turn to a much cheaper material, which was the same kind of brass that they made the uh, kind of stand and pull out of. Since the most iconic part of the banker's lamp was impossible to obtain, uh, the Emerlite company decided to switch to metal shades. About the same time, McFadden decided that he wanted to retire. Did he accomplish his goal? Was his vision and dream finally successful? I can only speculate. McFadden sold the company to one of its owners, Charles Innes Brown. Sadly, after this, it was a slow and painful death for the Emerlite company. They couldn't even produce the products that their name was after. They became financially instable in the 1950s. Then, Charles Innes Brown died. Sheesh, what an end to a golden run. This tragically marked the end of the iconic banker's lamp. Or did it? There seemed to be a ray of hope left for the banker's lamp. Not financially or business-wise, oh no. But psychologically. The image of this relic seemed to have dug itself into people's brains. The vision continued on. As it kind of grew into its popularity in the intermittent period between World War I and II, um, the the world, really, uh, had just been rocked by this just gruesome and just cataclysmic war. This is just conjecture, but I feel like it's, it's simplicity, yet its elegance kind of drove it toward popularity and drove people to it. It was almost just like a beacon of, well, there are still some good things in the world. Perhaps McFadden's true mission had been accomplished. After the death of the original Emerlite, copycats began to spring up. And to this day, you can still buy bankers' lamps. Because of the widespread popularity of these lamps in their heyday, they became a bit of a period piece, a symbol of a rich bygone age. They're the perfect object to emphasize the setting of a movie, show, or game. Not only are they a fancy prop, but I'd argue that our human interest in their elegance tells them something deeper about our human personalities. Humans enjoy the charm of the simple things, and this lamp is a case study. Sure, it's just a, a fixture to give off light, but we crave beauty in the small and daily interactions with the things we experience. We love art, and we want it to be part of us. Not only do we crave to have it, many of us crave to create it. McFadden had a vision he wanted to share with the world, and it continued to spread. I believe this green lamp shows us that a strong vision truly can change the world. What kind of things do you want to create? What visions do you have? Who knows, maybe one day your creation could be sitting on every desk in North America. You wouldn't think that the banker's lamp would be just like some obscure lamp would be such an interesting topic, but when, you, when you're when you willing to look for and seek knowledge, it's always there. And it's always interesting, and there's always something you can apply it to, right? Putting together this outline of the creation and fall of the Banker's Lamp has been an absolute blast for me. If you enjoyed watching this and you want to continue to explore creativity, please hit the subscribe button. I love delving and, and looking at different games and music and history so that I can learn how to create things better. Write down in the comments the different creations that inspire you to create better things. 
And who knows, maybe my next video will be about one of those very things. Hey, thanks so much. And we will delve into creativity next time. Spider-Man is a menace.